at 2.31 on May 1st. So do we have a minute? So you took the minutes last time. Um, are either of you willing to take minutes? No. I, I can take the minutes if you can. No, no. Okay, I, I have heard from uh, George that the town of Northampton, that the commit, that they, they do not take their own minutes and that they are taken by other people who are paid. Yeah. And I think that we have to do this. We're being all killed by minutes. I, um, I'll take the minutes for this no. meeting. No, you can't fine. see, it's, it's really impossible to run a meeting and to okay. take minutes. I will take them. Okay, so I will take them. Okay, thank you so much. Steve, if I could just comment, I know I spoke with the town manager yesterday and he is working on um, a plan to address the minute issue. So he's well aware of it. I believe he's spoken to Lynn about it, um, but he's definitely spoken to staff who are supporting this committee and other committees. So he is working on a plan and I think the intention is to have um, minutes, or excuse me, meetings recorded and then someone take the minutes. So in the meantime, I, I would appreciate it if somebody from the yeah. committee could, but we're working on a plan to have them done. Thank you so much. So let me just also say that um, I have the meeting going from 2.30 to 4.30. I'd really like to wrap up at 4.15, you know, if possible. So um, discussion of, it's really the town council goals, but also the, the goals for the CRC as it, we support town council. So my apologies for missing. Oh, let me also, I should say that everyone is here except for um, Sarah. So we have four members. So um, I apologize for missing the last meeting, but perhaps, and I did not get a chance to meet with Dorothy because of our own end of semester activities, but can someone bring us up to date as to where you are on this? Dorothy? Say that again, please. Um, if someone could bring us up to date as to what the discussion was at the last. I can do that. Um, let's see. We talked about meeting times, and we, at the moment we're down for every Wednesday, uh, with the exception of July 3rd. And there was one meeting where I might be absent, another one Andy might be absent. And so, But those meetings, uh, there was felt that at least the July 17th should go on, and we'll see about August 28th. Let's hope that we don't okay. have to have a meeting. Um, the, one of the big things we have to do is to look at the list of goals and values and the timetable and um, see how that fits with our committee. But the fact is we do know what we're doing for the next two months. We're working on zoning and master plan, I believe, as the main things. Uh, we discussed the CPAC proposal and we did vote to um, recommend that it be a pass accepted by the council um, after we passed it and he did say you know the finance committee has to look into this in more detail which we did not do this week because the 500,000 bond issue which is part of that package would in fact count toward the town maximum uh, towards I have either two ways of putting this and I'm not sure which is correct towards the maximum that the town can borrow or is that the same thing as saying against the debt limit um, so clarification yeah. It There's is, okay. Two we can borrow and live. Okay. And Andy said in future we might think about a growth tax. And again, I don't know what we're talking about, but that's an item that we need to talk about some more. Um, there was some discussion about what is the, in the master plan and, um, and how do we know to buy this piece or that piece for conservation. And um, Dave assured us that in fact, when he um, evaluates land that is presented to him, as a possible thing for the town to buy. He looks at the master plan and sees whether it is, uh, fits the, the purposes as laid out there. Um, there was a concern that Sarah brought up about um, not having uh, good agriculture land um, developed into uh, a non-agricultural use and we were told that soil samples are taken and in fact the piece of land, uh, the, one of the lands we looked at, the Zala land, uh, when it was looked at, was this good enough to be an APR? It was decided, no, it wasn't. It was too wet, it was isolated, and it didn't meet the state criteria. But they might try some limited development on the frontage. Um, again, it was pointed out, we lose no dollars in Hickory Ridge, hope to spend off developable bit in maybe affordable housing market or other uses. And a reminder that the East Street School Project will pay taxes. 
because of course, when you're looking at the um, community preservation, you do want to look to see uh, are, are think too many things being removed from tax rolls. Um, but we're going to be dealing with zoning in May, June, and July, and I believe our next meeting is going to be, um, this is to Dave on zoning, is that correct? And the master plan, we have that we set? Shifted it, I, think. I think it's master plan. The 8th will be on master plan and the 15th will be on zoning. Okay, great. Um, so Andy brought up an issue which was how do we deal with matters that are referred to us? Can we make our own timetable on our own initiative? In other words, can we bring up issues? This was probably in relation to um, the question of um, those brought up by Pat about lowering the speed limit on the main street um, in response to a recent um, death. And um, we, didn't, we didn't answer that question, um, but that issue we were told would be referred to the um, transportation committee and to the parking committee and that we were reminded that things to do with traffic and traffic plans are, are more complicated than they might seem and are part of some kind of overall plan. Um, so um, we will be thinking about that as it comes up. Um, we, the work that was laid out for us for today, I think, or to start on was making a CRC timeline month by month, and that's where we could talk about, and we probably need help on this. Uh, another question was, do we want to have, since we have so many areas that are major that are under our um, overview, do we want to have ad hoc committees with residents and counselors, um, or would that, not, would that be a bad idea, or would it be um, a value to have some of the members of this committee to be official liaisons to particular committees, or do we want to keep it uh, as informal liaisons, um, which is where I am at the moment, but in other words, there are a couple of committees, there are certain committees that we need to keep track of, and I thought if we would each say what committee we are already following or we want to follow and try to spread it out amongst the group so that in an informal fashion we were kind of keeping a, a finger on the pulse, but that needs more discussion. Um, that's really kind of what we got Thank to. Thank you. No, that was great. Thank you so much. Yeah, Steve. Yep. Andy. So, I, um, I thank you, Dorothy. That was great. Uh, there's a couple things that I th um, wanted to touch on. Uh, one was uh, you mentioned about uh, would try limited development on the frontage for the Zala property, and I think that that was in reference to Hickory Ridge. David can answer to that question for us. Oh, okay. uh, but uh, Zala would be purchased. Uh, with CPA funds and could not be used for that purpose. Um, it, that was why the proposal was made to have Hickory Ridge purchase go with two different uh, pieces. One is the CPA funds and the other with other town funds for that one frontage section where um, that's closest to Pomeroy Lane. Uh, uh, you, that, that is, I remember that now, and you're correct, so that we've moved that sentence down. And the fact that of using other town funds, um, I did not put in there, but I think it's an important clarification. Um, yeah, in the, in the draft minutes that I'm almost completed, I have that in the draft minutes, which is why it was on top of my mind. Um, second thing was, it says, you, um, the, what I was referring to on taxes is, is um, as we think about all of the work that we have to, to do about envisioning the future of the community. One of the things that we always have to be thinking about is um, the importance of new development in order to make sure that there is growth in the tax base so that we can meet the other demands of the town, including interests that are going to be within this committee that require revenue that without revenue growth, um, and that was that was the limit of it. And I think that the last thing that I just wanted to um, sort of touch on, because uh, just to make it more clear, um, I was looking at the committee charge when I made my comment, and um, the question came up within the context of the committee charge and the way that it is worded. 
do we deal with issues that are referred to us or uh, to what extent can we deal with issues that uh, may come of our own uh, thinking and uh, when you uh, because it, uh, when you look at the charge it says review and make recommendations to the town council of matters referred to the CRC regarding and uh, so when we get in can we uh, that, that's where that tension comes in and uh, it sort of got into the question of were we really charged with looking at speed limits and uh, it, that was just an example. Okay, thank you so, so much. Um, I just wanted to yeah. make sure I would have time to uh, talk about um, uh, CRC and zoning bylaws. Okay, so. I've been asked by the bylaw committee and Evan is gonna be talking to Sheila. Okay, well, should we do that as other business? Yes. Okay. So regarding um, the correlation of our goals with the draft goals that were distributed at our last council meeting, had you gotten, had you, had you started on? No. No. So that's part of our business today, yes? And I'm sorry, I'm trying to get up to speed. Yeah. So, so shall we forge ahead with I'm sorry, I'm just trying to get my sea legs here. So I have opened the document called, well, it was 6D in the last package, draft, council goals and activities. What's the date on that one? It's dated 4-18-18. Okay, I have 3 Must be 4-18-19, right. but it's 4-18-18, a year before the council. Under? It was um, under on the council packages for the last council meeting. I, I have 4-18-2019. Oh, you have a 2000, the 2018 one was sort of ESP. Let me make sure I'm on the same page as everyone else. There were two documents. So one looked like this as a worksheet. Yeah. And then there was this other thing, which was town council goals and assigned committees. So. Okay, so let me get my bearings. Right? Yeah. I don't seem to have the same, well, I have this one open, but not the other one. I think it's, hmm. yeah. Mr. Chair. Yep. The one that Andy's referring to was sent to you after the council meeting. Gotcha. Uh, so it would have been sent, I believe, the next day from me. So look for your emails for 420. 420. Oh. 423. Here we are. Draft town council goals and assigned committees. And actually, I think you sent this to me. So I have them both in that email. So which one should we use as our baseline? The one, the one page one which at the finance committee meeting, we looked at both of these. Yeah. Uh, we looked at the one page one and then the um, long chart. Yeah. So if we look at the one page There's one. There's like an executive summary. Yeah. Right. But I don't know where to get that. I mean, I can't operate a computer and a mic and a pencil. Can't do it. <laughs> we need so, a. So, um, it's, it's getting hot away. Now is this, are you talking about this as the one pager? I can share yeah. with you. No, this is what it looked like. Oh, it's 
So I even have a different one. I, mine I is a on a spreadsheet. One. I have, got sent, I have a yeah. spreadsheet, and th there were two documents in the email that you came mm -hmm. up with. Um, okay, so well, let's look at this since everybody has it. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, that's the one that I have. I think we're on the same page. It says April 18th. Okay, so we did just discuss a few of these at the meeting last week. For example, uh, maintain and strengthen relations with our higher education institution. And I, I brought that up, and I believe there was clarification that there is a two or three year agreement with the university. And um, I don't know whether we do anything on it or not. Um, I'd have to look, find the other notes. I, I believe that. David, I'm going to ask you, but I believe that that is a contract that's no negotiated by the town manager since he's authorized to do that uh, because it does have financial implications in it. That is correct. That is my understanding. So the town manager will negotiate that with the university and then at some point. I believe it then does come to the council. For yes. Approval. Later this spring, Paul will bring it to the full council. Does it come through here? That's the question. In other words, it's listed under CRC. The maintaining and strengthening relationships with the higher education institution has got CRC next to it. Yeah. Do we have a role in that as a committee as opposed to being part of a full council? You certainly, uh, I mean, one of the things that we might do is it would come to the full council. We might have an initial discussion about it. We may go ahead and adopt it, and thus you wouldn't have to do anything, or the council may may look at it, have an initial conversation, refer it to CRC. My sense is, though, that by the time we see it, it's already been signed. Yeah, is that? My, I don't yeah, my understanding is that the council doesn't approve no. the strategic partnership agreement between UMass and, and the town. Uh, it's negotiated by the town manager, and the town manager will bring to the full council the terms of that once that has been negotiated. There may be discussion at a town council meeting. They may refer it to you for input back up to the town manager, but my sense is by then it, it will, will likely be signed. Well, you know, it is in our charge. So I, I am putting forward a possibility that we at least spend some part of a meeting before the contract is done in which to see if we have any suggestions that we would give the town manager or questions to ask him. Um, Let me try to rephrase that. I think one of the options would be to look at the previous agreement and discuss yes. what these agreements look like. I'm not sure based on the nature of the conversation, so I am personally not privy to them, so I just want to be very clear. Um, I don't believe that those are negotiations that are made in public. Then should we, um, let's see, looking at the charge, I think it's in the charge, or at least or should we then correct it and take CRC out of this column? I mean, if we have no role, we shouldn't have it next to our. Well, there's certainly a lot more than just that agreement that is a relationship with higher ed. You're right, you're right. Um, everything including, you know, looking at some of the other committees and so forth. That's just one of the things. But I do think it would be perfectly appropriate to ask uh, through David, if the town manager, or David, who's familiar with it as well, um, could at least explain what that agreement might look like, what it's looked like in the past. Is that reasonable, David? Just so we understand at least that much of it. Right. And then maybe any other conversations um, that about conversations we have with higher ed institutions, other agreements, committees we serve on, because there is a committee around UMass, that's particularly around working with neighborhoods and um, noise and drinking, I guess. Or So there's other, learning more about what the town's relationship has been like with these institutions is useful. Well, certainly we get quality of life comments to us, but I think um, in terms of what I've heard uh, from the, the people is that wishing that there was um, 
some being part of the discussion if the university is going to do any major building on the borderline of a residential neighborhood. Uh, liking to know about that and maybe being part, some, at least some small part of that process, rather than having to react to things after they've been decided. David. So if it would be helpful around one of the meetings, it could be the 8th, it could be the 15th, it could be the meeting after that, you know, I'd be happy to provide, as part of your packet, the previous strategic partnership agreement, which is a public document, and then maybe I could walk you through it on that date, um, you know, later in May, and if you had any input or feedback that you wanted to get to the town manager through me, you know, um, that would be perfectly fine, I think. Um, yeah, I think that sounds like a great... And if we could include uh, two other, so the, there is no strategic, uh, only UMass has a strategic partnership with Amherst. Correct. So there is nothing, and no. We do not have agreements with Amherst College or Hampshire College. Okay. Um, I, I have a, a, yesterday in discussing with George the question of the, the new um, SRO on Northampton Road and thinking about possible future development on Northampton Road um, there was a wish of being able to talk with Amherst College just to see if, to, or to talk with somebody to see, does anyone have something planned? Is anything in mind? Um, again, it's bordering a residential, na resi residential neighborhoods on both sides, actually. So there is interest and concern. We know that Amherst College has bought some buildings on that road and made them into larger buildings, and uh, tastefully so, um, kind of matching their kind of colonial campusy brick type buildings, no objections to that. Um, so is that a possibility to have some discussion with them? Um, it's always a possibility, anything's possible. Um, my experience is that whether you're a private developer or a college or a university, just bringing forth concepts prior to entering a formal process with the town is not always uh, high on, on developer or it's, it's fraught with risk. Um, and, and the notion that Amherst College or one of the other institutions would come forth um, in some cases they do, in some cases they don't. We just hear about it when they begin to apply for permits or go through a permitting process. Certainly in the future, we could invite Amherst College in to perhaps give a, an overview of their campus plan, what they're, what they're looking at over the next five or 10 years, but I, 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 I'm not optimistic that they would come in and share plans for the Route 9 corridor with us. Um, they might just say, we don't have any at this time, but we don't know whether that's 12 months or 24 months or five years or 10 years. I mean, the colleges and university are always planning. They have master plans, or they're called other things at the other campuses. But So I think we could, we could certainly open a dialogue with Amherst College. We, we meet with them on a fairly regular basis, but they're not always... Um, in a position to be forthright months or years in advance of when they're thinking about something. I mean, they're planning for dormitories, they're planning for, for um, athletic facilities, they're planning for um, you know, infrastructure improvements. So, so it's, it's possible, but sometimes it doesn't fit in a nice neat box on what are you doing on Route 9 that... Um, right, because um, we, we received a, um, a document proposed Amherst housing priorities policy from um, John Harnick. And um, it concentrates on the UMass um, student plan and the relationship to existing units of housing um, and it, it, with figures and statistics. And it may be that Amherst College really has absolutely no plans to increase the student body. But if it did, we, wouldn't we want to know? Um. We would. I'm not aware, nor has it ever been mentioned to me that Amherst College wants to expand their student body at all. Um, not to say that it wouldn't, but we've not heard that about Amherst College. Um, 
Um, so I think, I guess I would go back to my earlier responses. I think in the future we could invite planning staff from Amherst College to come in and talk with us about their master plan. What do they see? What are their major initiatives over the next five to 10 years? That's your prerogative. You could invite them to give a, an overview for them and they have staff that um, may be willing to come in and do that. And I think it would be very uh, interesting to hear from them. I would, I would definitely like that. I would enjoy uh, having Emily share some of their planning ideas with us. Um, but I also feel like they have given, they're not opposed to the SRO. So I feel like that's a separate issue. Um, Did you have your hand up? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is a uh, complex and difficult topic that the select board dealt with forever and never with happy resolution. And um, I think that we need to just be realistic about what our <coughs> expectations are, which doesn't mean we shouldn't try, but to understand that these institutions, they're, each one of them is, is different, and each one of them comes with their own expectations and visions of what their um, how they make decisions and how they can control the use of their own property and what their vision is for their future. Uh, we've had a couple of instances with Amherst College acquiring property, for example, within downtown Amherst that uh, effectively took land off of the tax rolls opposite to what I said before about our interest in developing taxable property. One was the old Chevrolet dealership, which uh, they acquired for parking and maintenance facilities without ever telling us they were thinking about acquiring it. And the other is a building that they very tastefully redid that those of us who've been around a long time think of as the Peter Pan bus terminal. Uh, but or the Fiber Arts Center or the they, uh, First Baptist Church or the... In, in both situations, uh, Amherst College made a decision to purchase property and to, effect it, and to then take it off the tax rolls by using it for direct educational purposes uh, without consulting the town or being involved in any way. Uh, and, you know, they have a board of trustees or that uh, it's a national board made up of uh, people who have very strong investments in the college but don't have very strong investments in the town, I must say, is my observation. It is not an easy topic. And the university is an entirely different situation because it is a state entity unto itself it has some of the powers and attributes that normally belong to towns the university has the right to retain for itself. Um, the university in its current leadership is very interested in trying to be as collaborative as possible with uh, the town. And uh, Dave is co-chair of the uh, University Town of Amherst Collaborative. And, uh, you know, some of the development initiatives that you're referring to that have to do with student housing really uh, uh, came out of some of the UTAC work uh, in the strategic partnership initiative, or our partnership agreement that was referred to earlier is now being negotiated into its third round and because it is a uh, document that's ultimately being negotiated between the town manager and the chancellor, um, it is really not public conversations that go on. So this is uh, a very uh, set of complex, important, and difficult relationships. And I think that we just need to learn as much as we can about each one, but understand uh, 
that there are limits and that we need to find ways to express our strongest concerns uh, within the context of what's possible. And just to continue on down the road, um, we obviously need to pay attention to Hampshire College because their greatest resource is land. And the land is, you know, basically a substantial part of their endowment. So what, you know, how they choose to stay open will very much be, a, in my opinion, both uh, raising the cash endowment but also strategically using that land. And, and David again can speak to this, but um, because of what's been going on with Hampshire College, uh, the town manager did reach out to the previous president of Hampshire College, uh, and I understand will also, and is in touch with the newly named interim president. Um, the predominant issues as they immediately affect the town is we do provide them with sewer and water. Um, they do not have much of a police force left. And so that pretty much means we're there for that, although they're not one of our bigger clients from what I understand. Uh, and in the town manager's report, he's reported on yep. some of that. And then we did, the, we did actually see the newspaper today and it was anticipated in a previous conversation, even with the prior president, uh, that there would be some layoffs mm -hmm. and also that they're in the process of trying to, um, in fact, I think we just saw a letter from the president how they're trying to deal with faculty, um, either some taking early retirement, some taking a year's leave, um, so that um, they're trying to deal with a number of financial situations. I, all of that's a long way of saying uh, town has taken the initiative to um, reach out to the college and make sure that they're engaged in conversation. And the current president is a longtime resident of Amherst and actually has been very involved in the town gown discussions. Yeah. Uh, I would just comment on that article that um, I was very pleased with the efforts that are being made by the surrounding colleges and the idea that a current student or next year student at Hampshire could still see a professor who was a Hampshire professor, but who is now a visiting professor at another local university, and that that professor could, in fact, for extra contract money, continue to advise the students. So allowing for some kind of continuity of education, I thought, I thought that was really good. Uh, I know that, that the, the town manager has been very concerned with um, workers, um, workers in the food service and, and grounds who are losing their jobs, and um, I don't know that that's going to have an impact on, on um, rents or apartments or whether people are going to be unable to meet their payments. I don't know. Um, just wondering if, Dave, if you know, does, the town doesn't really have that much social services, does it? Um, I guess what I can say is that, as, as Lynn said earlier, we have been in discussions with the previous, um, through the town manager, with the previous president and with the current interim president. And so we're working as closely as we can with staff there um, to be aware of the layoffs, what impacts they might have on people who live in Amherst, um, who may have children in the Amherst schools or uh, have uh, significant others or spouses who work for the town or the schools or, or at other institutions in Amherst. So we're, I think, as aware as we can be. And I think Hampshire College has done a nice job at providing support for those uh, faculty and staff who, who are in transition right now. So I know Paul is keeping apprised of that and offering uh, what support we can. We don't directly provide social service support or unemployment support to those affected, but I know Hampshire has connected with those employees affected uh, to local, state, and other resources. And, and to add to that, both um, Representative Mindy Dom and State Senator um, Comerford have been very much on top of particularly 
um, making sure that those workers got the kind of state yeah. uh, and local assistance. It, it's through regional employment boards that you get dislocated worker services. So, I'm sorry. No, no, okay. No. So what, what exactly is the expectation then? So this is an interesting discussion. So it says a signed committee submitted plan. What is the expectation as to how we translate our, this discussion into the template, Madam President? I knew there was a reason I came to this meeting. Um, it's interesting, as we were putting together, and Pat is on this committee, uh, but as we were putting together the various goals, we had serious uh, elementary and secondary goals uh, because of the regional school district and, and the potential of a new elementary school or schools. And we decided we should throw in a higher ed goal because it's a huge part of our town and we do have relationships. And then the question was, well, if we put a higher ed goal in here, which committee would it go to? Well, CRC is the logical committee. Uh, so I think this is the kind of discussion. I mean, I've written down since you've started your meeting today. One is to review previous strategic partnership right. agreements with UMass. Okay. And that that would be something that CRC would do through, through Dave. Another is learn about individual campus master plans. and I've not put a deadline on that or anything, but it's something that if they're willing to come and talk to us, they might. Uh, eventually, we will see the strategic partnership agreement with UMass that will be the third one. Um, so we don't really do anything with it, we get to see it. We just, we get to see it. It's a town manager negotiation. So, so basically, we do our own strategic plan goals based on the CRC, I mean, I'm sorry, based on the council overarching goals. Right. That's kind of, okay. So it's really, you know, are there other things that you think we should be doing? There are these other committees. It's just understanding. I don't see this one as one of your major goals, but I do see it as, I mean, they are a significant part of our community yeah. and form a huge part of our economic base. So it's... It, and it certainly could become one if, I mean, the public-private partnership proposals Right. Um, the Hampshire College uncertainties, you know, things like that could mm -hmm. raise this to the top. But so maybe, so then maybe through the minutes, what we'll do, I can do is then try to establish our own goals based on these. Uh, let's keep going until we find our name again. And now I'm at year one and beyond. Master plan review and revise Review and, if necessary, revise and adopt a master plan. That should be easy. The, the, yeah, right. The charter requires, yeah. with no specific time frame, that the town council adopt the master plan. And therefore, obviously, you bring forward something that says, well, before we adopt something, we, sit, we clearly have to know it. And I think what um, you already had identified and have scheduled now for the next meeting is a general overview of the master plan. And then on the other document, I think you gave a suggested timeline. I did, but this is draft. Yeah. This is suggested. Let me, let me uh, try to find where that is. Bylaw review. Give me a sec. It might be the same. Um, master plan, here we are. Well, I'm on page 14 of the longer document. So initial review of master plan. So it's page 14 of the, yeah. yep. Um, Presentation and discussion of the master plan at a special town council meeting, early fall 2019. Are we all on the same page here? I was until I touched something. Develop and begin there. implementation of a plan to review, revise, and adopt. Convene public forums. So this is all in the fall. Continue to review, assess, and consider potential updates. So a year process is what the committee was thinking. 
It actually goes over two to 21. years till 21. And I want to just stress, and I can't say this strongly enough, um, the planning board is really almost like an equal partner with you on this one. I mean, it, the master plan is really a planning board document. And a lot of it depends on whether or not it's a renovation or if the recommendation is a, a new building. So if it's a renovation, it seems like a task that could be done in the timetable, you know, suggested if it's a new master plan, which could certainly be a recommendation, that's a very, you know, expensive and extensive process. But I think starting the process in fall 19 makes sense to me. Anyone else want to comment on that? Well, this is this is page 15, right? Yes. Where well, I, I was different. using a little colored marker. Yeah. Um, yeah. And marked every time CRC oh, came up. Page in 14 pink. for me. Okay. Uh, 14 15, but and 15. It says for me. CRC and planning board. Yes. Right. So initial review, which is what we're going to do now, then it goes on to. Well, the fall is what you're just saying. The presentation, discussion, the master plan, and special town meeting, town council meeting, and includes other knowledgeable about plan. Okay. Um, I guess we have to set that up. Uh, do we? Do we do that? Set that up. Uh, so who does it is on the far right. Town council, our committee, the planning board, and other committees as appropriate. Mm -hmm. But we would set up our own. Right. We would. Yeah. yeah. If it's a special town council meeting, we would set that up with the, right, right. the president. Yeah. And then, so then we're not revising, we're just making a plan to review, revise, uh, and A master adopt. plan for the master plan, yeah. yeah. Right. So let's see. Then a f public forum in the late fall. That's, that's going to be, that's going to be very busy again, uh, like where we are right now. Um, more public forums. When just, is the revision? Just uh, so you know that the charter does require public forums about the master plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's one of the reasons why I got caught in that one. Okay. So we don't really, when do we vote on it? Fall 21, is that it? If you stick to this timeline, this is all draft. Mm -hmm. This is all suggestion. It was to throw something out there so you had something to work with to begin with. Yeah. You can look at this and say, this is absolutely not doable, and this is not what we should do, and David, please. So I think this is a really good point to go back to Steve's earlier comment about, is this um, an update of the master plan, or is this a rewrite of the master plan? So to Lynn's last comment about I mean, I think the town council suggested something. If, if we're going to do a rewrite and an update, or excuse me, a, an update of the master plan, clearly it'll go more quickly. It'll be less expensive. It'll be more, uh, less time, time uh, uh, consuming. But if we're going to start from scratch, then it's going to be a much longer process. Until you get into the master plan, until you have a, a, a discussion with Chris and Rob and myself, um, I think I would leave that as kind of question mark on, on the timeline. I see the first meeting where they give you the overview as the first part of that conversation. So we want to get you familiar with the master plan, we want to get you familiar with zoning, and then we'll look at your timeline and work with you and say, okay, we need Chris to come back because we need more, a better understanding of this section or that section or that section. Or in your initial read, you say, you know, this section really this needs work, let's put that on the work plan. And, and, and then we can talk to Chris and Rob because they and their staff are the ones who are gonna work with you, with the planning board, and likely with the uh, zoning subcommittee on uh, rewrites to either master plan or zoning, so. Um, I know one area that I would like conversation is it's accepted as gospel at this time that we want um, a lot of development and infill development in the town or village centers. And um, 
I'm not sure that I, I would like to have us look at that zoning again and to be thinking about um, the challenge of doing that and preserving the New England character of the town because that's been a big issue for some people. And I think we have to do that soon. I mean, I'm, I'm worried about the, um, <laughs> the continuing fascinating saga of, of Porta. Uh, when uh, it was very interesting to see that the owner of the land said, well, we're not gonna do what we had planned to do before because the town didn't like it. So I was happy about it. My husband said, yes, that just means he might sell the property to someone else. That person doesn't want to do something that will cause us to all be unhappy, but it doesn't mean he won't sell it to somebody who will try something else. So uh, we've got to really be moving quickly, I think. Well, if I could, and, and Steve knows this better than, than I, having been on the planning board for so long, but that infill development, that goal of, of channeling our, de our future development toward the village center is uh, um, uh, referenced in the master plan. In fact, it's a core, yeah. it's a core uh, uh, facet of, of the master plan. So I think that's why it's so important to start with that. Do we still want to concentrate development where development already exists in the downtown and the other village centers? If we agree that we do, that is a goal of the town, um, how we do it and how the zoning supports and reflects that is a deeper conversation. And without going into that depth, um, I think in our first meeting, Steve referred to form-based code. So we will get around to talking about form-based code, but form-based code is one tool that can give the town um, more input. I'm not sure control might be too strong a word, but um, it can certainly move us in the direction of, of um, seeing some development there that, that uh, um, might fit in with, with the existing uh, in a way. And again, I'm not taking away from any of the development that has already happened, but um, let's see how that plays out as in our discussions, so. Yeah, and um, the last master plan was approved 10 years ago, right? Something like 10 years ago. And the, the shelf life of a master plan can be 20 years, 25 years, you know, something like that. So we're about halfway. We're at the point where, you know, who knows? I, I don't have an opinion as to whether or not this is the time to, you know, start the process again. But there are there is a lot of information now that was so back then it was all theory, right? Yeah. So there, and now there's actual <clears throat> real life projects that we can see in the you know North Amherst and downtown Amherst and different places where there was a strategic interest in concentrating development into areas that were, had already been developed. So, so now we have a better baseline and that might be help us refine the existing master plan. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so we're gonna just do, uh, we're ready golf, which means when you're ready to talk, just talk. Okay. <laughs> um, it seems to me that the uh, master plan um, there is a lot of it that's very, very clear and very good. So rewriting the whole thing from scratch doesn't seem to be my goal, uh, but really looking at it, understanding it, understanding the relationship of zoning, and then reflecting on what's working and what isn't working, and making changes seems really the route to go on. Yeah. There, there are difficult issues, Dorothy has uh, touched on some of them because infill was a goal, um, but infill was sort of also recognized as part of what I had referenced earlier that if we don't have development, we don't have new tax growth and uh, we can't achieve our other goals that are incorporated in the master plan and that we envision for the town because we won't have the revenue to support it without uh, asking our current taxpayers to pay even more, which is replete with its own difficulties. Um, and then there's the tension between trying to protect um, 
significant development and change within what is the current residential neighborhoods um, and uh, how that fits in with what we do. These are tough issues and we need to have a process that allows the community to talk about it, sort of gets back to then the process that led to the last master plan was a very large, um, valuable, and expensive process mm -hmm. because there was a number of uh, community meetings and opportunities for the community to be involved throughout the process. It took a long time to do that work. And I think one of the things that we in the planning board need to do is to understand the complexity of the prior process, how much of the plan we really think needs to be revisited and the extent um, and means of involving the community. Obviously, community involvement is important. It's, it's a question of how and how much. Right. So to sum that up, you're saying of, that we need to look at the plan and figure out how much of it we want to focus on in terms of, of um, perhaps revising it, and then to also think about where and when we want the public input. Is, is that correct? I would think so, but I would also not want to reach conclu conclusions and exclude parts of the plan for review without letting the public mm -hmm. um, express their concerns um, because there may be parts of the plan that they particularly like or particularly hate and or just particularly don't understand. And uh, I think we need to make sure that we have uh, significant public engagement to allow those questions and discussions to take place. It's, um, you know, it's my favorite subject that we can say, all agree that infill in the village centers is a great idea. But then when we get down to it, we won't agree on what we mean by infill. We won't agree on what we mean by village centers. Right. So it's a fun discussion. Mm -hmm. Well, as a uh, Just deviation, I went and looked at uh, Olympia Place and Olympia Oaks for the first time yesterday. And I um, don't know how that building's going to weather, but it's certainly interesting looking, the pointy one with the, the white side. Oh, the, 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 um, yeah, that's yeah, Olympia Place. Five story, yeah. it, it was at least architecturally interesting, yeah. so I like that. And I thought Olympia Oaks, which I've, I haven't checked it out to see how much of it is affordable housing, it looked like a 100%. place that I would have moved in when I was, you know, had young small children, which I can't say about so many of the other affordable housing places. So, you know, there's development and development. Some of it looks exciting and interesting and is well cited, and other isn't. And that's kind of what, yeah. the, what the problem is. So what I'd like to do is call the committee's attention to, to parts of the charter. Section 2.13 is on public forums and it requires that the president of the town council shall call no fewer than two public forums a year to address the master plan and the budget respectively. So in other words, every year we have to have a public oh, forum on the master plan. And then when you actually go to section 9.8, it's much more descriptive about master planning and gives you the language, for instance, that the town council has to adopt a master plan, uh, et cetera. Um, it also talks about master plans being done at least every 20 years. So there's a whole lot more in the charter. Yeah. And so as you approach next week's meeting, um, I'll make sure you get those pieces from the charter that pertain to the master plan, okay? The other, the other thing I would say is, even though I've given you a deadline for when I would like to have these uh, things back, you can also say, we're solid on this date and everything after this, we're not clear whether this is the way to do it or this is the dates by which we would do it, okay? Well, I would propose that we forge ahead with the draft dates, which right now look reasonable. And so we can, if you all agree, we can incorporate that into our own timetable. Yeah, I mean, we will be able to change those dates 
if we if they yeah, start yeah. not to fit. So it's yeah. crazy not to accept yeah. them. Start something. Yeah. Everyone agree with that? So do you want that? I, I will make a motion that we ac accept these dates Perfect. and uh, work with them and adjust them as needed. Second. Okay. Motion and a second. Discussion? I see none. Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you're in favor. It passes 4-0. Four 4-0-1. Zero. Four zero um, so now I've moved on to my page 16 which says um, zoning review, assess, and revise zoning bylaws. And this is the CRC working with the planning board, including its zoning subcommittee. So the target date to begin and end, spring 2019, which is, which is now, mm -hmm. and then through next year. So I think that after our, what I would propose is that after our sort of overview of the master plan and the zoning bylaw, that then we schedule a meeting, maybe we've already done, maybe we've already, that we schedule a meeting with the zoning subcommittee of the planning board, yeah? Have we we already? haven't yet. Okay. No. Because the zoning subcommittee, which is that the is keeper right. of these sorts of changes, would be the most, or, or we could do it with the planning board itself. me but I think one of the other things you that may adjust your time frame and that is that as of July 1st oh, we yeah. will be seating a new zoning board and planning board now I have no idea what the makeup those will be some may be people from the past um, but it might be an opportunity to do some things together uh, do you do you mean that we should try to meet with the um, planning board and zoning subcommittee now with the old committee, and then we can meet with a new committee, committee later? I, I would suggest, so there's no time like the present. So yeah. the current zoning subcommittee, I would imagine, has a portfolio of things that they're interested in. If that were to, for whatever, so the planning board can reorganize itself, even if it's the same people, they can reorganize themselves after the new New count uh, the new fiscal year. Um, I think there's no time like the present to get to a brain dump of the current, either the whole planning. In a way, I want to leave that up to them. Do they think it should be with the planning board as a whole or the the zoning subcommittee? I wonder, Steve, if having the meeting on the eighth on master plan, the meeting on the fifteenth on zoning. Maybe having one meeting after that, because you may want Chris and Rob to come back. Yep. I mean, this is not a one and done on the master plan yep. or a one and done on zoning. So then we maybe look, maybe at your last meeting in May to yep. have the planning board come in. I know also the town council is gonna be extremely busy during May with budgets, Budget. particularly late May. So maybe we kind of flex a little bit looking at the last meeting in May or the first meeting in June to have the planning board or, or we could leave it up to them whether it's the whole planning board or the um, zoning subcommittee come in. I do think to Lynn's point or question earlier, um, we don't know who will be on the planning board come July 1, but I do think I like your idea of a brain dump. There's, there's wonderful, committed, uh, experienced people there some of whom we may not have right. uh, in the future, we can't predict. So let's get their, their wisdom and their input now before there is a new seating of new members. I like the idea. So maybe late May or early June? Yep. So just, just as for the minutes, um, the 8th is the master plan, the 15th is the planning board, the 22nd, you thought we might want the planning board again? Or the plan no, wait, we haven't. Um, no. I was thinking skip one meeting. So the 22nd is a flex meeting because I think there will be follow-up and questions on master plan and zoning, and then maybe have them come in, invite them for that. What's your last meeting in May? Um, the 29th. Okay, and I'm realizing that, and I was, when you say planning, you're talking the town planning professionals, and I'm thinking planning board. Right. And, but Steve is talking about let's meet with the planning board and the zoning subcommittee while they're still whole before the new people come in, yes. right? Yeah. 
Right. So, so we, and how, Steve, how would you arrange those meetings so I could put it here in the minutes? Uh, well, um, I, I would be what, happy to work with, through yeah, Chris yeah, Brestrup, yeah. the planning director, yeah. to arrange those. So the planning board itself, including the zoning subcommittee, meet Wednesdays. So the, I think the zoning com subcommittee meets Wednesdays at five, five and the planning board meets Wednesdays at seven. So hopefully our time slot might work, but if you, if you guys are willing, maybe we can meet during their time slot. Oh, um, oh. that sounds yeah. good. Yeah. 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 I guess that I had one other question of the body, and that is the um, bylaw review committee under on the town goals and signed committees page, which we are looking at under year one, where it says bylaw review, complete the update and adopt the general and zoning bylaws signed committee bylaw review committee. That's what I want to bring up. Yeah. <laughs> At the, we'll, we'll do that. Uh, yeah. Okay. And what, you were reading that one? Yeah, where are you reading that? Oh, I'll we'll show it to my uh, chair here. Right there. Okay. Oh, you're on that sheet. Okay. Yeah. So we'll get to that under other business, if that's okay. Because yeah. that's. Yeah. Uh, so this really has to do with the existing zoning bylaw, right. as opposed to changes to the, like how do we make those existing zoning bylaw work? It just, Doesn't it? I think that's right, but I just want to make sure that we're clear about it so that we don't get into Yeah, I don't think this is a, so any changes to the, see, I, the, this is actually the part I don't know, because any changes to the zoning bylaw require a public hearing by the planning board before it goes to the legislature. Sure. There are, couple, there are two things that yeah. are happening. Should we just go into the? Uh, maybe. Yeah, yeah, let's just go into that. The bylaw review committee was looking at the town bylaws, which including the general bylaws and zoning. And when we came on as a committee, we did we asked them to continue in two forms. One, we asked the, to have the bylaw, the general bylaws, reviewed by the committee. Uh, expanded with some counselors on it. The planning board is looking at the zoning bylaws. The issue right now for um, the bylaw review committee, it's still in, uh, we're still supposed to um, bring, have council approval, but, so what we're asking is initially, all that was taken out of any of the bylaws, general or zoning, was references to select board or town meeting or things like that. Um, and we've gone through, we're on our seventh iteration of the general bylaws. The planning board is working on looking at substantive changes, not making them, but tracking them and, and talking about them and bringing them forward. But there's been no, but we're charged with having them reviewed. So we're at, going to be asking this committee and GOL, when when it comes up, um, when we present the bylaws that you you guys are willing, that we're willing not to review those, but leave them with the planning board, so that we would, as a council, make the decision, or as com two committees make a decision, to recommend to the council that we do not um, need to look at that initial review that was done by the bylaw committee. I see. And that the planning board, that's their starting base. And so they're, but they're looking at it not just at, at the um, uh, editing changes and names and things like that. They're looking at the content of the bylaws, the zoning bylaws, and they should be. Yep. And those will come to CRC and they will come to GOL. Hmm. So we're just asking this committee to say, uh, NGOL, when, you know, okay, we accept this format and we know the planning board's working on it. We don't need to take it into our committee because that will slow everything down okay. for not a particularly good reason. Can you restate that, that yeah. simply because I didn't, I don't know what to write <laughs> down here. Um, we would like, um, 
for when the bylaw review committee presents its report. If there's any clarification, I'll just ask the word. I'll, I'll do a double check and make sure I'm saying it correctly. Mm -hmm. um, that C, uh, CRC mm -hmm. accept what the bylaw committee has done, which is simply the editing of. Oh. Yeah, that's that's right. Okay. And that that we say, okay, we don't need to look at it. We're, it's going to the planning board, and then okay. we will look at it. With, with and after the planning board. Okay. Uh, but their right. changes, those yeah. are substantive changes. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. that, that, yeah. that makes sense, good. Okay, and so uh, Evan is gonna talk to GOL okay. when we meet next week yep. and, yeah, for the, to ask the same thing. Perfect. So it'll be a formal just saying, we want this to go right to the planning board. It makes sense to me. So do we need to take a, make a motion for that? No. Probably, uh, let's let's make it and yeah. um, do it. Yeah. Um, do you want to make that motion? Is that sure. a, okay, and I'll second your motion. <laughs> <laughs> Any discussion? Seeing none, in favor, raise your hand. 401. Okay. 401, what do you mean? I'm, I'm uh, one person absent. absent. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we're still on page 16. So I think we have at least a start for that. I'm sorry, can you say that again? I think we have at least a start for, so we're still on page 16. We have a process for how we can begin a discussion of the more substantial changes to the zoning bylaws by beginning meeting with the zoning, the planning board slash zoning subcommittee. Yep. Yeah, I, I think this is uh, for Dave is that uh, we should think about making sure that the presentation we receive from the planning department gives us an overview that you understand better than I think the rest of us do about all of the mechanics that are required by law mm -hmm. in changing zoning provisions um, and how that works within a, um, the current form of government we now have. Because it's my understanding that the uh, changes to the zoning bylaws still have to arise through the planning board, yeah. through a hearing process, and then they come to the council as opposed to going to town meeting yep. and uh, that um, our committee will then have a role in reviewing it, but the extent to which uh, we might propose further modification is something that we need to understand ourselves. And so that could be presented to us um, with somebody who really has a firm foothold in zoning law that sure would be, be, be happy to talk with chris and um rob i meet with them tomorrow and this will be one of our main topics um i would also suggest that somewhere either in the zoning discussion or in the next meeting they may um give you a sense of what the zoning subcommittee has been working on they may not go into great details but they might just preview that just a little bit because there's there's a lot of things to work on, as Steve knows. Um, it's all about prioritization. So, um, so they may just hint that these are some of the, the larger areas we'll you know, that, that you will hear about later in May or something like that. And, and so the process under town council, I probably I can guess at, but I'm not sh certain that I know about. But so generally, the, I mean, the charter says that the, gives authority to various groups to propose changes to the bylaw, but no matter what, it has to go through the planning board for this public hearing. The public hearing can be a negative vote, but and typically if it is a negative vote, it doesn't move forward, but it could move forward. I mean, I don't. the negative vote is simply a recommendation to the legislature. Yeah, I'm gonna have to 
yeah. look at that more carefully myself because yeah. I didn't prior to this meeting. So. And then uh, the other thing is the just, and I'm just thinking about things we have to think about. So the amendment process, so at town meeting, the way that town meeting worked, at least by the rules of town meeting, is that proposed bylaws could be changed on the floor, but only if they were less restrictive. Or, or so you, in other words, if something said, this shall be no more than 40 feet, someone could propose that it shall be no more than 30 feet. And so, um, and that definitely happened sometimes on the floor, and I always, I asked the moderator at the time, how, <laughs> since that has already been vetted through a public hearing process, how can we be changing it on the floor? Because no matter what you're doing, you're changing the scope, and we're not sure what. So, but anyway, that was a process we have, and now we have a new one. So yeah, we'll, we'll get some guidance yeah, yeah, yeah. on that before, before the meeting as well. Yeah. Yep. I have a, a, an issue about public forums. Um, we found we had a public forum. Uh, Lynn, I don't remember what topic it was on anymore. It was the one where people oh, were asked to talk about what they would like to see in, in the, the budget. budget. Yeah. Okay. And we didn't have anybody come. And uh, I think that this is a new thing. There's no town meeting anymore, but we have a lot of public forums that if it were possible somehow to make a schedule in advance, if possible, that would be published and that the interested com uh, citizens of this community would know and that we have kind of some kind of uniformity of place and time or something that would, they would say, oh, I've got this hearing coming up or this forum coming up with, of course, clarifying what the hearing is and what the forum is because it's, to me, a very complex thing. Um, otherwise, we're gonna have these things, we're gonna go through them and very few people are gonna be there because they didn't really know about it in a in a way that allowed them to plan. Okay. Right, and I think maybe down, as we move to year two, mm -hmm. um, we can get a whole lot better about that. Um, we do have both a hearing on the budget, for example, uh, scheduled in May, and another hearing on the capital, no, excuse me, a public forum on the capital plan uh, that is scheduled on June 10th. Uh, the other thing we're trying to do is make sure that all hearings and public forums are at night. The, and uh, the public forum on the budget will actually be on a Monday night, which is the same night we would normally meet as a council. So we're, we're trying that. And then the other thing that we have clarified is that at public forums during the 50% of the time that is um, public comment, we can actually be answering questions and providing information um, even though, quote, we're not the public. But So it can be more of a dialogue. Steve, to, um, to your point, uh, Dorothy, I think, you know, the the opportunity is ours to kind of redefine how, to some degree, within the law, of course, public hearings and public forums, there's a difference legally between the two. But um, how we get people, how we engage people is we're, we're trying many new methods throughout town and, and the new form of government. But certainly, you know, I've been doing this a long time for the town. Um, there are kind of recipes that work and sometimes ones that don't. And I will say zoning, um, typically where we get a good turnout is when it affects you and the people who are affected come out. Um, but I've been in this room, as says Steve, where it's been, you could drop a pin and there's three people and it's a major zoning discussion. So I think we need to brainstorm with staff, with other committee members, with con your constituents, um, I have seen a good luck at taking uh, discussions out to, we didn't have districts before, but out to different parts of town um, and not necessarily meeting in this, in this space. But if there's something that might have an impact on North Amherst, let's go out perhaps to North Amherst and have a meeting and we're, I think we're much more likely to 
to get a large crowd at a public forum, I'm not talking about the public hearing, but at a forum where we're gathering input on what people would like to see relative to zoning in North Amherst or East Amherst or South Amherst or downtown, working with the bid in chamber more closely to try to get business owners, landowners, property owners to come to these and give us their feedback. So I think we need to try anything and everything to engage more people in these discussions. What I think historically sometimes happened, and it was nobody's fault, is tremendous work by the planning board, zoning subcommittee, and staff. And it got to town meeting, and some people were surprised that something was coming before town meeting. And I think our new form of government affords us the opportunity to uh, not have surprises and, and potentially engage more people earlier. So it's going to take some work, but I think the opportunity is there. So we have, I, I have to leave at quarter after, so we have about a half hour left, and we're, um, I think we've pretty much discussed that which is on page 16. We haven't talked about the big committee of the whole master plan zoning 101 community. That would be a special meeting where the whole um, town council gets the master plan zoning 101 community resource, but that's, I would assume that would be during a regular council, could be during a regular council night. And then um, uh, field trips around town <laughs> and hold workshops to examine results of present zoning bylaws. Might make sense, but let's get through these, these uh, presentations before we. Yeah figure out where exactly we would even want to do that. So I've moved on to page 17. Identification of zoning bylaws that we would like to review and change prior to. So these are sort of the priority changes to zoning bylaws, which I'm sure the zoning subcommittee slash um, planning board has, they always have a, sort of an urgent list that this should be changed because it's stopping this good project, or it's starting this bad project. So this will come up as we meet with them. But that makes sense for fall, to me that makes sense for fall 2019. I'm not sure where you are right now. I'm sorry, I'm on page 17 now. Uh, yeah, but what section? But, oh, the very top. Because we have different. Oh, okay, I'm zoning. sorry. It, I'm on page 17 of a document that has 24 pages, 21 pages, mm -hmm. and the headline is, the very first page says, We're Amherst Town Council Gal, go, uh, Amherst Town Council Goals Worksheet Draft, draft as of 4 18 19. <laughs> Page 17. Plan and conduct field trips. You were talking about that. Oh, I'm sorry. So we're I jumped. Trying to see where you. Oh, uh, where my where I am yeah. in my head. Okay. Uh, if you look on the left, the left column, goals referred to, and then there's a big block with zoning with A and B. Right. Yeah. And so if you start there, if you go down two blocks below it. Yeah. Regardless of how you're paginated, you'll come to conduct field trips to around right. town. Okay. Yep. And then it says conduct field trips around town. And what mm -hmm. I was going to suggest before we commit to that, yeah, let's find figure out what field trips we would yep. need and hold workshops. Let's figure out what workshops we would need. So uh, are you accepting the summer uh, 2019? I was proposing or do you think that we accept it. I, I was proposing that we accept this timeline. Oh, okay. Got it. Yep. Okay. By consensus. Without objection. Yes, <laughs> or punctuation. Objection. Yeah. We fine. We had a consensus. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Then I moved us on to page seventeen, which is still the zoning um, section. So this is taking us into next year. Mm -hmm. And all of this sounds good, but what we need to do is to, I, I'm sorry, to me this all seems good, 
but until we know what you know our priorities are, the planning board's priorities are, it's hard to you know comment much comment much more than that. I agree. Um, it's it's useful to have it broken down in steps, but that's so far from where we are now that it's it's just yeah. hard to imagine yep. at this point. And um, thanks to the goals committee for giving this much thought to this because I think this is, you know, really good. And, yeah, my thought is that the steps themselves um, is what I'd first concentrate on, and I have no uh, suggestions to make on changes to steps. Time goals that are put in there, we may need to reserve the opportunity to make yeah. mo uh, proposed modifications yeah. as the year proceeds and we see yep. how we do. But I think that the, what I would concentrate on now is what are the steps that are proposed and what is the order for doing mm -hmm. the steps? And if that seems right, I think we will have done a lot. And while we're here, let me just ask chat. Are you here for, are you going to comment or are you just here to listen? Okay. Because we do have time for public comment, but okay. Do, does the, do the minutes note who the public is if they don't comment? No. Chat. They don't have to. Chat anonymous. Oh. Okay. <laughs> chat anonymous. Yeah, it's ch chat anonymous. <laughs> So I suggest we accept these for now, and and I, I, I think a lot of thought has been put into the to the steps. So I was going to move us on to page. To housing. Housing. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, uh, review and, if necessary, revise and adopt comprehensive housing plan and priorities. Um, then the next block is review and discuss current housing plan and priorities. So this to me sounds like a, another presentation to us after we've cleared the, you know, the decks of the planning, zoning, master plan. This. We did talk a little bit about this at the last meeting, Steve, and okay. I think we had agreed that doing a, a, a session with you all and any other counselors who might want to come on affordable housing, I'd like to have uh, Nate Malloy, our yep. staff uh, person who focuses on affordable housing, and then maybe John Hornick team yep. up and give a presentation on affordable housing. Yeah. Okay. And um, John Hornick has forwarded a proposed yep. Amherst housing priorities yep. policy, which I think would be, be really yep. good to be looking at that as well. And there are numerous th things out there like the 40R study that we all went to, most of us went to the presentation on information session on that. Mm, some pretty significant housing studies that have done, been done by the town that are available on the town website. Substantial investment done uh, to get those in place and we really need to have time to review them and ask questions about them. Uh, and I think that that's sort of incorporated into the review and discuss current housing yeah. plan and priorities. I would assume that that is part of it. And, and uh, so it gets back to my comment. I like, it's an important first step. I, it's a step I'm glad to see identified uh, spring of this year yep. it's, uh, rapidly escaping us and we've really committed it to planning a master plan, learning about those topics. So I really uh, am doubtful that we're going to get into yeah. the depths of those housing policies. And I don't think that we can comment on uh, what we received from Mr. Hornick until we've had a chance yeah. to really get that deeper knowledge. 
And housing is a big part of the master plan. And so a lot of the housing studies that were done were done after the master plan was adopted. So this could be a place where we could you know, ask that a, or try to have a part of the master plan rewritten or to adopt these as part of the master plan as another mm -hmm. option that we have. Mm -hmm. Two things there. One I would suggest when Chris Brestrup presents to you on master plan, one of the first things she'll tell you is that although the creation of the master plan was a very inclusive process with hundreds mm -hmm. of, of residents and staff and, 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 and folks involved, committee and board members, where we perhaps didn't do so well was on um, implementing some of the, the recommendations in the master plan. Now, some of them have happened anyway, like all the studies and some of the infill development, but I think Chris will point out early on that we didn't allocate time, energy, or money for implementation. But then back to affordable housing, again, I would suggest that sometime in June, um, I put kind of June X to be determined TBD, pick one of the June meetings and we'll set up John Hornick and, um, and I'll work on this with John Hornick and Nate Malloy um, to come in and give you an overview of affordable housing, uh, the various studies, and I'm sure they could put together, you know, a 45 minute presentation and then follow with this, uh, a discussion. So, uh, and again, we could invite the counselor, council if that was, you know, your, your wish. Um, I, I have a request. Um, I, I know it's very good having all kinds of things on the website, but I don't, I don't operate from the screen. Mm -hmm. um, I like paper and I, I mark them. And um, so what if I find that somehow, I first I have to find them, maybe there's five studies. Are some more important or better than others? I mean, I would, I would love to get a set of documents of the best plans with some comments. Sure, why don't I pull that together for you? And I think I can, I can pick out, I'd like you to have, you know, if you'd like the master plan, the open space and recreation plan, the housing production plan, housing market study. If I got you probably five reports, you'd be in very good shape and you could mark them up and have them for reference in a folder or binder. But we can do that. I, I'm very happy with that, thank you. So with your permission, I, I was going to move us on to transportation, or do you want to talk about transportation being 19, page 19? Where did you develop and adopt a comprehensive transportation plan in FY19? Yeah. And that, so some that of this we've already done, January through February of 20. Yeah, we also have to get CAC in there. Yeah. Transportation advisory, yeah. Where am I? Tag yep. is listed yep, under right. the goals section on the left and then yep. not included in oh, uh, the yeah, responsible yeah. parties and committees. Yeah, and I you. think that that's right. where it probably we need to make sure that TAC is appropriately involved. Uh, I think that it is an important, difficult issue. It's one that uh, two committees that I'm working on additional to this have been spending a lot of time thinking about both the Finance Committee and uh, the Joint Capital Planning Committee. Uh, we need to make sure that we incorporate all of those committees in, together into the process because this is one of those um, areas where we can't address some of the transportation issues without looking at uh, the budget and capital implications. Uh, so I would, uh, and the timeline strikes me given all that we're doing is gonna be a tough one. Yeah. Um, and that's, uh, and I sort of have similar comments, so I don't have to repeat them regarding parking. And uh, I think that we need to be thinking about that and we need and find out what the um, manager's plan is to continue a downtown parking working group and if so, what our relationship would be with that group. 
Yeah. I agree. So I think this is a priority, but we have a lot of priorities. <laughs> I don't see how we can do it in, you know, with this timeline. Yeah. Well, I, I asked at the Finance Committee yesterday that the Finance Committee, th that we have a more integrated schedule, or at least one with room, because we need to add all the finance meetings, the town council meetings, and we have to add the CRC meetings. And I've been doing it by pen, and it's basically one every day for every day of the week for the next foreseeable future. And they all relate to each other. Um, and we just need to have a, a, a master plan like that so we can make sure that we do the right thing at our committee meeting to be prepared for whatever we're supposed to do in the council meeting so the votes that need to be taken can be taken. Hmm. Any more discussion of transportation other than we think the schedule is going to be hard to meet and that the tech needs to, and the, and the down, well, the, what the would you like to change it to? What do you think would be? Well, the, so the first one we've done, check. The second one, January through May, so we're in May. Right. Um, I would think summer would be the earliest. Mm -hmm. I would move everything back one season, I think. Well, so. wouldn't that kind of depend upon if the downtown parking working group came, yep. had a report and came to us and said, we want your approval, yep. and then yep. we would read it and do our best and. And that's the next section, the, is parking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So if, a, if the TAC or the downtown parking working group had specific proposals. Andy, you have your finger on the button. It's like Jeopardy. <laughs> I'm just going to point out that the way it's listed and it makes sense and so, um, is that parking is separate from transportation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so we need to make sure that we want to combine them or don't want to combine them, but right now they're separate in the document. Uh, so that was the first point that I was raising as far as parking is concerned. Really need to uh, think about um, that. I'm curious, I was not able to attend the presentation from the Nelson Nygaard working uh, group um, that were the consultants that worked on the parking. I don't know if any of the rest yeah. of you were there. Um, it was very interesting and um, his, uh, Conclusion was that there were many parking places or small lots that we don't know about that aren't signed properly, and that if and I, I if their suggestions were implemented, implemented, there would be a lot more downtown parking. But the big thing is somebody who comes in for an evening to go out to dinner and to a movie, who doesn't live here, doesn't know our secret places, and have to be shown where they are by sign. That was part one. Part two was to do with the whole internet world of parking apps and um, that are um, the names of places that we have, are, and I don't, use, I don't work in this, this world right here, but that they're not, they're not using the same language and if they can get the same language, um, then people who use those apps can get around much easier. Um, so it was a very interesting proposal um, that was kind of positive. He said, we did not see a need for building a parking garage at this time. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And, and You're not going to out my secret place, are you? They also indicated that we Don't. couldn't afford a parking garage. Pardon me? They also indicated oh. that we could not afford a parking right. garage we because can't. a parking garage requires uh, an assumed construction cost per space of forty thousand dollars per space. Yep, yeah, that was and, so shocking. And uh, which, you know, was higher than the amount that I had previously heard, but I would always assumed it to be a high number. It just was higher than the last number I had heard. I did some additional inquiry as to how much money would need to be generated per space um, in order to pay for that construction right. cost with revenue from 
the parking system itself. And the answer that I got back from the town manager was $257 per month for space, which is greater than we now receive for parking space revenue by far. Right. And uh, then you get into an issue that I um, brought up at the District 2 meeting, which is if we can't um, meet those costs um, with uh, parking revenue, it becomes another capital project that we need to fund in addition to all of the other capital projects we're funding. So the, uh, these are complicated issues that um, I think we need to find time to learn about them. Um, and uh, we, we have a lot that is our, on, on our plate in this question of when we can get to it. Um, and I guess the last thing I'll just point out is this there's a whole history that I can give you because I lived through it of the decisions that the select board made regarding the current cha changes that were made about a year or two ago to the parking system, why they were made, and what the goals were. Uh, this is all uh, understandable stuff, but it's another bundle. So I had one question about this. So this um, company whose name I don't remember who gave the presentation um, were hired by the town to do this study. Would they, if we're paid more money, do any of the implementation that is recommended? Or would the town have to do the implementation and do they have the money and do we need to budget it? Because it sounded like some of it wasn't going to be too hard and should be done. I think I, I have not been as involved in the parking uh, task force work as some other staff, so I think I'd prefer to invite Jeff Gravitz to join us mm -hmm. in the future and talk about that a little bit. I know that one of the identified opportunities that has been put out there, both in the previous study and this one, is the abundance of private parking downtown. Uh, which probably came up at the forum or at the meeting um, with Nelson Nygaard, uh, who is the consultant. So I think I'd rather have Jeff come in and talk to you about some of the conclusions of this study. So um, I, I think there are some things that we could implement or some things that we, you, you can pay to implement. I know there is sensitivity about consultants, and so I think we've been really prioritizing what projects we need them on and what projects we don't. So let's let's save that if we could and have Jeff come in to speak with you at some point. It also seems to me, and maybe this is a finance committee issue and parking issue, is we need to um, reduce the uh, time frame for paying for parking. It should end at 6 o'clock. Yep. I mean, it's clear that it instead of the way BID wanted it to work, which was to move parking spaces, it just makes people not come to town. Yep. And I think that we really, really need to look at that. Um, this is part of the complex issue that I was referring to and why I'm not sure that we want to get into a long discussion with five minutes left about it. But in the 30-second uh, version, the reason that uh, the proposal was made to change the parking hours in the core spaces the two that are closest to the restaurants that people go to frequently is that we were finding that restaurant employees and other users were taking parking spaces coming in at 530 and then sitting on the parking spaces until past 8 o'clock at night and then people coming in wanting to go to dinner were not being able to find parking proximate to where they wanted to go and the, the recommendation to um, extend the enforcement to 8 o'clock was in order to create a turnover of spaces and, and therefore availability of spaces near to restaurants. And uh, the, uh, so there was a goal that has served a purpose. It has had a consequence of making people unhappy, but as I've pointed out to some folks when they've asked that question, 
would you rather um, not pay for a space that you can never obtain, or would you rather be able to pay for a space that you can obtain? These are the kinds of issues that I don't think we can solve by 415. I agree with we can't solve it by 415, but sometimes complex issues have simple solutions. And uh, if an employee is parking in front of the restaurant and it costs them 50 cents an hour now, or a dollar an hour, or whatever, a dollar an hour, and they ch they're still choosing to do that. If It's not clear to me ever how much of a, a major problem that was. But I think we actually are losing people coming to town and using our restaurants and using the theater. So. <laughs> and um, not to get into the parking discussion as we talk about the timetable. Um, yeah, you know what, I'm gonna hold off on it, yeah. The other thing I would add on the goals and finance committee liberally did this the other day, and that is they actually changed the wording on some of the goals. Yeah. So if at some point you want to combine or subsume parking under yeah. transportation, feel free to do so. <laughs> so, oh, okay, I will get into this. So surface parking is like the worst land use in a community in which you're trying to encourage walkability and um, you know how are we going to describe it the village feeling so there is no surface parking on the part of Amherst that we everybody loves which is that block you know where Hastings is so there's no surface parking there so surface parking can and should be in fact it all is zoned for a higher for a different kind of a use so for a change of use into mixed use, mixed use housing, however you want to put it, that creates a demand for parking, assuming that there still will be cars somewhere else. Right. It's incredibly difficult to, it's a basically stops. So there is no surface parking, nor is there structured parking in these 1880s buildings over here. That's the part that we all mm -hmm. love about Amherst. If we want to encourage that in the, where there is surface parking, then those cars will have to go somewhere. So, okay. that, and I don't, I haven't read the study, I didn't go to the meeting, but there certainly are ideas about, rather than giving a free pass to people who develop buildings without parking, mm -hmm. that they pay into a fund that creates or parking. Or build parking. <laughs> well, they can't the, build, the build parking. The basement parking disappeared yeah. in several projects. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Like Spring Street. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So that's an issue that, that, so that it shouldn't be pushed out into the neighborhoods, mm -hmm. but but um, if Not we were- Not only is it pushed out into the neighborhoods, but we lost parking on Spring Street. Exactly. And that's so so that, that is, an, and I don't know how much of the study looks into it. So what another one analogy would be if we required everyone who developed in downtown Amherst to provide their own well, or their own septic system, then the, we would basically stop development because yeah. it's impossible. Yeah. So. I don't think, I, I think, that we don't believe that we have a right to ask for what the town needs from developers, and I think that that's a false assumption. Yeah, and, yeah. So, and but I may be wrong. No, but so, but, so, I, so I think that rather than uh, that buildings have parking uh, under them or whatever is an important part of how we are paying in the same way that um, everyone contributes to, you know, town water, town sewer. You know, so that's a utility that if you're a user of it, you contributed to that way. I think that, and I don't know, I don't have that particular strategy in mind, yeah. but that parking is seen almost like a utility that you have to pay mm -hmm. into if you're creating a No, I'm not saying yeah. that's a bad idea, yeah, yeah. but it's not the only solution. Um, I have a suggestion. Yeah. Um, My husband went to the sustainability fair and picked up little pamphlets, including one that lists public bathrooms in the town of Amherst, <laughs> which I thought was very handy. And I think we just need uh, a little parking map, very similar to that, after we have done what was suggested by the parking uh, consultants, made arrangements with some of the private parking that is scattered in little spots all around the town, already existing, yeah. and just you know made some arrangement where they become available to the town, and then have a map of it, and then people can park in little spots yeah. without us having to make any new garages or big surface lots. That already exists, by the way. 
It, it does? Yeah. Great. Okay. I'm making a motion that we adjourn and that we pick up this discussion at our next meeting. At our next, so I'll, I'll put this continued discussion of uh, our yeah. goals at the next meeting, which will be, yeah. Thank you all very much.